Hey guys, it's Pastor Natasha. I am so excited that you guys are here today at Kix Kids Online Experience. Thank you for clicking on our video, for watching our video, and for uh, just doing all of our fun things alongside of us. It has been so awesome to be on this journey with you all. Um, if this is your first time at Kix, welcome. It is awesome to have you. If you've been here for a while, hey, I'm glad you're back. Um, we are gonna have a lot of fun tonight. We are gonna be doing a snack that's really yummy. We're gonna be talking about our Bible story, which is a story about the day of Pentecost, which just so happened to be the last Sunday of the, that we just had. And also we are gonna be doing an awesome craft slash experiment. And I just wanna thank you guys so much for sharing this video, for liking this video, and for sending in your pictures. I have gotten so many pictures of you guys doing everything that we are doing. It has been awesome. You've been doing the craft, you've been doing the snack, and it has been great to just see those pictures come in. So please keep sending us your pictures. Please keep sharing our videos so that your friends can see the awesome time that we have at Kix. And, uh, and give us a like and, uh, and follow us online so you can get more of our content but I've talked for way too long, so let's get in to our snack. Hey guys, I just want to welcome you back to my kitchen. Today we're gonna to be making a yummy dip to go along with some apples. So if you have apples, you are already a step there. Uh, you are going to need a block of cream cheese, some sugar, white sugar, some brown sugar, and some vanilla. It is super simple and you need a bowl and a mixer, or you can do it with a whisk. You just have to make sure your cream cheese is really, really soft. But how to start is you're gonna take your cream cheese, and we're just gonna put everything in my bowl uh, before we go over to my mixer. And uh, then we are gonna be ready, and it's gonna be so yummy, guys. I'm so excited. So I took my cream cheese out to soften uh, a little bit earlier, just so that it will be easier to to mix and you're just gonna stick it in there and clean up as you go so I have my garbage right there and then you are going to need three quarters of a cup of white sugar You're going to need a quarter cup of your brown sugar. Pack that down, pop that in. And then you are going to need two teaspoons of vanilla. I have homemade vanilla, but you can use whatever vanilla you have. One, two, and then you're ready to head over to your mixer. So let's head over. So once you're over at your mixer, you're just gonna snap your bowl into place. I have my whisk attachment on, and you are just gonna mix it, mix it, until it gets creamy. Then once you have it mixed, you're just gonna wanna give it a, a scrape around the edges to make sure that you have everything mixed in. Oh, it smells so good. And then you're gonna wanna mix it just one more time. There we go. So then you're gonna to wanna to put it into your serving bowl and we're gonna cut up some apples to have with it. All right, so once you have that all mixed up, you're just gonna come over. You're just gonna cut up an apple to have with your dip. Now you don't have to have apple. Um, if you have graham crackers, you could make graham crackers with it or uh, whatever else 
you like to dip in things that are a little sweet. It's probably not like chicken nuggets or anything, but definitely apples or, um, or graham crackers, as I said, or whatever else, blueberries. I like dipping blueberries sometimes if they're the big blueberries. Um, you, can, you can choose whatever you want to dip. And once you have it all cut up, you can dip, have a snack. Mm. That's yummy. So enjoy this snack and let's just celebrate um, as we go on into our story. So get your snack, grab it and go and we're gonna jump into our story right now. All right, we'll see you soon. Hey guys, did you know that this past Sunday we celebrated a special day for the church? If you know what this past Sunday was, shout it out, let me hear you. That's right, it was Pentecost Sunday. And this is the day that we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming into the lives of Jesus' disciples and a bunch of other people. So let's grab our Bibles and we're gonna read together. So pause your video and go and grab your Bible and turn to the book of Acts, chapter two. So pause now and go and grab it. We are going to read from chapter two, verse one to verse 13. And you can read, you can follow along with me as I read. So chapter two, it starts like this. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like a roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each one of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken to the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappado Cappadocia? Cappadocia, I think. It's really hard to read some of these words. Pontus and the province of Asia, Phygra, Pamphylia, Egypt, and areas of Libya around Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts of, to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, and we hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things that God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. So that's what the Bible says happened on this day. And the day of Pentecost was the moment when Jesus' promise came true. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, the power from on high that he had talked about and that they would need to start their work in sharing God's love with the whole world. And Pentecost happened 50 days after Passover. And it was a harvest festival, as, as well as being a time when Jews remembered the day when God gave them the Ten Commandments, the rules that they had to follow, their laws. And for these first disciples that we just read about, it took on a brand new meaning. They were the harvest of Jesus' work. And by God's Spirit, his laws were now written on their hearts. Just as when Moses met with God at the burning bush. So these first believers 
were now on fire with the mysterious flame of God's power. Just as Moses had climbed up Mount Sinai to be given the law on the mountain, and the mountain had shaken with God's glory. So the room where the disciples met thundered with God's presence as they felt that mighty, mighty wind. And just as God had breathed life into the first person he created, Adam, so the wind of the Holy Spirit filled the believers giving them a new beginning as new creations. The disciples began speaking about God in strange languages, languages that they probably didn't even know how to speak. And miraculously, the multicultural population of Jerusalem could understand what they were saying. In every language that was spoken there, they heard the word of God. This was the birthday of the new people of God, the Christian church. This is the church's birthday. What an awesome, true story. God sent his spirit into our lives so that we could do the work of the church and tell people about Jesus, that he died for our sins and he rose again so that we could have a relationship with our loving God. Now I have some questions for you and I would like you to answer these with the people who are watching uh, this video with you. So here are the questions and I'm going to put them up at the end of me reading them just so that you know exactly what you're going to talk about. So what ideas do we get from this story about what the Holy Spirit is like? Why do you think that God chose to come as the Holy Spirit in such a dramatic way? What different reactions did the people in the crowds, what, what did they have? What different reactions did they have to what happened? And last one, how did the disciples change from the way that they were only moments before to how they were afterwards? So go ahead and pause this video and talk about these questions. So what happened at Pentecost was a starting point to show the disciples what they would do next. The people who were in the crowd from different places represented the world as people understood it then. And behind me, I have the world as we understand it today. And that's why I wanted to have our story time here because I really wanted to have our world here. And look, this is where I'm from. Maybe you're from there too, but maybe you're from a different place. But that was how the disciples understood the world then. They knew those people. Uh, were in their world and the disciples would be taking the story of Jesus to all of these different places. So if you have a world map or you have Google Maps, see if you can find some of the places that were mentioned in Acts 2. So open up your Bible back to our story and you can see those places where those people were from and maybe you can find some of those places. And if you can, I encourage you to take some time to pray for God's church at work in those different places because God's church is moving and working all around the world. And that started at Pentecost. So let's pray together and uh, keep on going. Father God, I want to thank you so much for who you are. You are such a good God. You are a God who, who knows us and who loves us. And God, you are God the Father. You are God the Son who is Jesus, and, and you are God the Holy Spirit. And God, we thank you for your spirit that came on Pentecost to live in the lives of those who believe in you. God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that is living inside of each one of us who, who know you, God. And God, we just pray uh, for our world that, that those who who know you would be able to share about you, God, with our families, with our friends, 
And God, we pray for um, the global church, the church in the whole world, God, that they would be able to, to reach new people with your love every day. God, we thank you for who you are and the awesome things that you have done. God, we thank you for your love. And we want to say that we love you too. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, we are outside here at the church uh, today for our craft because it's gonna be a little bit messy, um, but it's gonna be absolutely awesome. So what you are going to need is you're going to need three, four things, five things really, six. Six things if you're counting all of the utensils and everything. So you are going to need some water, some dish soap, some sugar and then you're also going to need a spoon probably a measuring spoon a tablespoon a bubble wand and a bowl now I already have my water in here I already put it in uh, but we're going to put in the sugar so I put in four tablespoons of water and next I'm going to put in two tablespoons of white sugar into the mixture So here's one, here's two, and then you're gonna need one tablespoon of dish soap. So I gotta put my, my mixture down, and I'm gonna measure out one tablespoon. And you're gonna put that into your mixture, and you're gonna stir your mixture together. gonna look a little bit weird you're gonna still be able to see a little bit of the sugar and once you're done mixing it up I'm just kidding you need seven things so once you have it mixed up you can dip in your bubble wand just like normal and hopefully once you've had it mixed enough you're gonna be able to blow some bubbles so you can use these bubbles just like normal bubbles, but they're also really cool because if you have a glove, like one of your winter gloves, um, kinds like from Dollarama, the ones that look like similar to this, you can put it on and I moved because the wind was too strong. So let's try this some more. So if you can get a good bubble, you can actually get it to bounce on your hand there we go and it's very cool so try this experiment see if it works and see if you can get some bouncing bubbles Wow guys, what an awesome time we had here at Kicks. We had an awesome snack that it was so yummy. We had a great uh, story with the, the story of Pentecost. I just love listening and hearing how God moved in uh, through the Holy Spirit and how the church has just expanded since that day. And we had an awesome experiment slash craft uh, with our bubbles. I hope that you were able to do at least one part of our video um, that you were able to talk with people around you or you were able to make the bubbles or the snack or maybe you're saving those for later and that is absolutely awesome. I just want to thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for uh, picking up your kicks kit. Um, it has been absolutely awesome to be able to make those for you week after week. If you need a Kix kit for next week's video, make sure to reach out, message us, and we are going to have one ready for you. And it's just going to be an awesome week. So guys, have an awesome week. May God bless you. And we will see you back here next week. If you blow a good bubble, hopefully this is going to work. If you blow a good bubble.
if you blow a good bubble, you can make bouncy bubbles. If they float away from you though, I guess. If you blow a good bubble, they'll actually come on work. If you blow a good bubble, they can actually If you blow a good bubble, they can bounce. The wind is too strong. Oh, there we go. If you blow, ooh. <laughs> if you blow a bubble, you can maybe get it to bounce. with your glove or they just blow away oh, here we go oh, nope just kidding the wind got too strong <laughs> this is failing